Now another cool feature that CoffeeScript gives us is the question mark. So in this case, we can see that our alert is being called and we don't have to use parentheses to pass through arguments. So you can see alert is being called with the arguments I knew it. Finally, there's a predicate which we've seen before, but it's using a question mark at the end of the variable. So what this expands out to is that it tests for both the type of Elvis being undefined and the type of Elvis being null, meaning that if it's either null or undefined, this entire line will not be executed. But if Elvis does have a value that's not undefined or null, the alert will be called. Another form of this is using the question marks equals operator, which will only set the value on the right hand side of the operator if speed is either undefined or null. So this is a great way to assign to things if you don't want to overwrite an existing value. Now one of the most powerful things that it gives us is list comprehensions, which are a feature in a lot of different scripting languages, but not native in JavaScript. And what list comprehensions allow us to do is iterate over a list, mutate that list somehow, and get a new list back from it. So in this expression, we're creating a new list called cubes, and it's going to be based on the original thing called list. So we say math.cube of number for number and list. So what this expands out to is it iterates over every item in list, assigns it to a variable num, and then calls the expression math.cube passing in num for each one. The result of that is then passed into the result array, giving us the cubes of every number in the list. So it's a real quick way to map out an entire array from one set of values to another. It also gives us a pretty cool shortcut notation for ranges. So in this case, we can create the numbers one through 10. Now when this expands out to JavaScript, it does a very simple thing of just doing the numbers one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. But it gets smart if there are a lot of values to the point where listing them out manually would be longer than the code needed to generate them, it actually gives us the generated code. So for the numbers one through 30, instead of just giving us the literal numbers, it actually gives us the code to generate the numbers one through 30. It also gives us a way to get segments of a list by using a slicing notation. So if we have the numbers one through 100 or something, and we use the array notation three dot dot six, that means we're gonna get the numbers three to six. Now it's actually pretty simple how it evaluates it. It does numbers dot slice, which is a method that allows us to get a segment of an array and then it passes in the values based on the range that we passed it. Numbers can also be assigned to a segment of an array by assigning an array to a range. And this is a little bit more complicated on the JavaScript side because it needs to splice it and it needs to figure out the array that it needs to pass to apply the splice. Now, if you've ever tried to use a splice method, you understand that it can be a little bit difficult to remember how to call it correctly. So this is a nice little notation that allows us to replace the values in array indices three through six with a set of values.